How y'all do? Ah! Hey everyone on the A list. I'm doing a part two to Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Bring down my bonnet. <laughs> but, um, I left off on the Fellowship of the Ring, like the title of the movie and whatnot. I'm gonna do the rest of this whole thing where I'm talking about Gandalf and how he really is that dude. He really is that. He's that guy. He's not that dude. He's that guy. And then his death. All that. I'm just telling you at the beginning so that you can already just know what you're, what you're expecting and whatnot. This is going to be a high energy video. And this is probably going to be later on in the day when I do it. 4 p.m. probably is when I issue it out. Because right now I have to go and find my classes. But for college and whatnot. But yeah, you know. And then the rest of the movie, it felt like it was supposed to drift off. Like, I'm, I'm going to explain it. Let me let me go on and explain it. Okay. Ah! Uh, what's good? What's good, guys? Okay, so I was supposed to do this. I was supposed to do this yesterday. I was tired. I was sleepy as fuck. So I didn't even do the rest of it. This movie is long, though, so y'all can't even trip on me. This movie is long as hell. There may be three parts if I'm going to just be for real with you. Because I'm going to be talking about the Gandalf part so long. Like, I'm, I'm not even going to be blind to you or nothing the Gandalf part he really is that G like let me not even say that guy let me not even say that dude he's that G okay so we left off on um, this part so we left off on this part where I talk about the fellowship of the ring the fellowship of all man elf and dwarf including Gandalf as well he's a wizard and whatnot you know with all the hobbits there and they're about to go on this long ass journey where they have to destroy the ring and carry it away from there because the orcs are going after them and whatnot. So I left off on this part specifically because it just felt like a middle break to me and I was tired as hell. So I was just like, okay, let me just leave off on this. Let me, I would do a cliffhanger, but let's not, let's not, let's not. Okay, so right after this, they tread away from Rivendell, the land of the elves, and then we see them going into like resting parts you see them going to a mountain cliff you can see them going into a snowy plain you, you, you see that happen and let me just talk about some of those even you see something like this even though it's not exactly shown in the movie i feel like this is art but they're just walking along trying to reach their destination oh that's from something else hold on hold on hold on okay i'm just they settle on this you know so they're off on their journey and then, I don't know if this is before or after they reach the cliff or something like that. I don't know. But, like, you know, anyway, I'm going to talk about the snowy plain first. They're walking around the snowy plain. Something strange happened. I think Frodo fell. Like, I'm saying I think because it has been a little bit since I've watched this movie. It's recent, but it's not that recent. It's, like, before I came back to my college dorm. So, anyways, something happened. The ring fell out from Frodo, and it was around his neck and whatnot. Something happened. Boromir, the one who was weak to the ring at the start, like he was just like, why don't we use this for power? Why are we talking about this? Why don't we actually put this ring to good use and whatnot? Not even realize that this ring is fucking evil. Like he knows this ring is evil, but he's he's man. He's of man. He's a race of man. The race of man is weak to this ring specifically. So when he picked it up, you could tell that he has early signs of just becoming addicted to this ring. Like. It's corrupting him already, and he hasn't even worn it yet. So it's like, damn, you know. He's just looking at this, and then, you know, um, there's a moment where Frodo is looking at him just like, uh, the fuck? And Aragorn is right behind Frodo, and he's just like, dude, give Frodo the ring. And then the movie doesn't show us until it pans down. But Aragorn had that, had that, you know, he had that um, sword on him. I'm sorry, I don't know why I'm over here not thank you right now what is wrong with me i'm stuttering he had that sword on him he was ready to strike boromir right at that moment Frodo didn't notice it he was in front of is i almost said isildur oh my gosh aragorn but aragorn was ready to take out this man because of how he was looking at this ring look at how he's looking at this ring he's looking at it with confusion and and wonder you know that's how you know he needs to never wear this ring it will corrupt him like off the first wear and whatnot so yeah then we go to the like, Ooh, this moment where it's just like they go to the mountain cliffs. Now they reached this, I think, before they went to the snowy plane thing or afterwards. My memory is it's 
crappy. They did take a break right here, and it really just shows you how, you know, they're really nice to the Hobbits. They play with the Hobbits and whatnot. They teach the Hobbits how to fight. They don't ever degrade the Hobbits. They don't ever look down on them. They're just really, really cool with the Hobbits. And I was just like, that is so sweet. Like, I, I, I can't, I can't. Child, anyways, not this part. I, 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 th I don't think you can see it. There was a moment where avalanche, a mini avalanche happened, and they were had to go into a walk on this like ledge and whatnot. Something occurred because of, <laughs> may I just say, there's a villain I didn't tell you about. A big, a big villain I didn't tell you about. Not because I forgot, but because I was leaving him out on purpose. Because he is basically the main villain. Well, not main villain, but he's like a Deuteragonist villain of this series. It is Saruman. Saruman the White is a wizard just like Gandalf. Gandalf already knew of this wizard. So with the wizards, what they're telling is they fell from the sky. They were created by a god with a mission to save this world of the peril that was Sauron. And, and in short terms, that's not fully it, but I'm just saying it in these terms. This is what their mission was, right? Saruman the White has been corrupted for, I guess, decades or a century or whatnot, because they're very old. You know, Gandalf went to Saruman for help, for it to confide in with this whole situation, right? Gandalf did not even make it to the Prancing Pony Inn. This is like in a totally different direction, right? Saruman is talking to him, and Saruman's just like, oh yeah, we should submit to Sauron. We should get the ring. Like, and then Gandalf just like, oh hell no. And then Sauron closes his doors and just, not Sauron, not Sauron. Saruman. Oh, they're, I didn't realize their names are so similar to now. Basically, Saruman was just like, no, we should let Frodo die. Because Gandalf was, he knew Frodo was in trouble or whatnot. Or he knew Frodo was going to be in trouble and whatnot. It's a good thing he told Aragorn beforehand. Because if not, Frodo really would be in trouble. So, yeah, anyways. He had imprisoned Gandalf after they had a fight where they were just like, boom, bow. They weren't like throwing a fist or nothing. They had their the big ass stabs and shit. They were throwing each other against the wall, using the force and shit. He over here had Gandalf in a spinning head tuck. Like, I, I, baby, let me just show you. I, I'm going to see if I can show you. He had Gandalf like this. That is Gandalf right there on the floor. He was talking mad heavy. There goes Saruman. Saruman was talking heavy as fuck as Gandalf was spinning and shit. This a new breakdance move or some shit, but uh, shit. I, you see my generation try to do this right now. No, I'm just kidding. But yeah, he had Gandalf like this, and then he threw Gandalf into the air to the roof of the castle. And then you think, oh, shit, that's where Gandalf dies, right? Nah, nah, Gandalf ain't dead. Yo, I'm back. Most of the day is like gone. <laughs> I had to go find my classes. I found my classes with my sis. Anyways, yes. Yeah, so after the snowy mountain thing, when the avalanche had happened, they were discussing on which direction to go. I think Bordermere, okay, Sean Bean wanted to go into the direction of what? Numenor? One of the, one of the lands of men. He wanted to go through that direction, but they couldn't. It was either too far away or too risky. The dwarf forgot his name is Gimli I think it's Gimli oh my gosh my memory is terrible child anyways Gimli wanted to go through a cave that used to be the house of the dwarves I think it's called Moria and whatnot and then uh, Gandalf was very shook Gandalf was just like he didn't want to go through this because Saruman had mentioned beforehand taunting Gandalf that Gandalf is afraid of something down there like there is an evil shadowy figure of fire right and Gandalf doesn't want to go down there like he's afraid that he may meet his match down there right and this is what should I show y'all what it's gonna look like nah nah I'm not gonna show y'all I'm not gonna show y'all but child anyways and yeah, they're all covered in snow and whatnot so Gandalf being shook shook it to the third degree he over here just like hmm Frodo what direction do you want to go through? And then Frodo, <laughs> surprise, surprise, says the direction where Mordia, House of the Dwarves, basically where Gandalf does not want to go. And I'm just like, Gandalf, you should have just said so, baby. When they asked Gandalf, he should have just straight up said, we're going to go through the race of men's land and whatnot, or the land of the men. We're going to go through that. Not this big ass dragon motherfucker land cave and stuff like that. Like, you know, we're not going to go through that. 
but Frodo had said the one place he didn't want to go through. So anyways, they traveled to there and whatnot. Now, I'm not going to hold you. Some of these pictures are very blurry. But anyway, this is where they go to the, like, entrance to where Mordia is. And there's a swamp right there. Now, Pippin being a dumbass. Um, I'm sorry. I'm cursing a lot in this one. But, but I don't care. I, it just pissed me off. Some of these characters just pissed me off. Okay. Pippin over here throwing rocks into this swamp. Not knowing what the hell is in there. Cthulhu may be in there. And guess what? Cthulhu is in there. So, but anyways. There's a riddle on the door. That Gandalf is having a little bit of trouble with. It's. What's the words for it? It has something to. Hold on. It had a riddle to where it says, speak friend and enter. Now, Gandalf was stuck on this riddle, speak friend and enter, right? He was speaking in Elvish. And I think he was also speaking in Dwarf as well. I think he was speaking in a mixture of both. He was saying a whole ass sentence for this when Frodo afterwards came up with the idea like, oh, crap, they're literally telling us to say friend. And then we can go through. And it's just like, I, that's what I thought that they were saying. I thought Frodo's answer. I thought that Gandalf was just going to say friend and elfish. And then they go through. No, Gandalf was saying whole sentences to get through there. I'm just like, damn, bro. Saruman messed Gandalf up. Gandalf must be nervous. It may not even be Saruman. I think it is because Gandalf is very nervous about the monster in Moria. So he over here just, that riddle passed over his wizard hat. Like, baby. But yeah, anyways, they entered through there. But before they entered through there, um, this big ass monster, I don't know the name of it, but basically Pippin over here being a dum-dum, he done threw them rocks. They told him to stop and on the third rock, it hit something. It was a big ass octopus ass thing. And then, um, ooh, Legolas, Legolas comes in clutch. Like I'm not even gonna hold you. Legolas comes in clutch. And I don't know if I told you who Legolas is. So we're gonna go to him real quick. This is Legolas. Very handsome, very handsome. Oh, played by Orlando Bloom, like very handsome man right here. He was an elf, a part of the Council of Elrond and whatnot. He was just there. I think he's a native to Rivendell and whatnot. And he agreed to go on the fellowship of the ring and whatnot. He has a bow and arrow. I think it's a short short bow or whatnot. I don't know why I'm stum stumbling. Oh my gosh, fight me, fight me. Child, anyways, he comes in clutch, right? That bow and arrow be shooting through out of nowhere and then the monsters be down, be down, my boy. It's gonna happen in Moria too. But anyways, the monster got off of them. Like he stunned it before they went in and the monster was pissed off. And then the monster closed the entrance once they ran into Moria. Cause originally they were gonna come out of Moria. They were feeling iffy about it they were gonna go into another direction and then this squid motherfucker came and was just like ah nah 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 run it up then son and then it proceeded to fight them and then cover the entrance so they went through moria you'll realize that you know moria being the house of the dwarves they built a lot of i don't i almost said places they built the bridges there they there there are architects and whatnot or, or builders blacksmiths all the types of a kind you have some narrow ass bridges i'm gonna show you the narrow ass bridge. you have this extremely narrow bridge right so it is basically wide enough for you to walk across but to run in a straight line you'd have to have some really good balance i'm just saying if you are clumsy i don't know but the hobbits managed to run across so you know i mean mary and pippin managed to run across and they made it so yeah they also made a bridge hold on let me show you they also made a bridge i'm gonna just keep talking as i do this every time i say oh, let me show you i'll be pausing in and stuff like that and i just like ugh. but anyway i'm gonna do more of a staircase it's hot in here if you turn on the heater i don't know what's wrong with me but y'all anyways uh where is it where is it where is it it's kind of weird the stairs like this right so they don't look that confusing but you see there's no railings basically they just made these stairs because they could make these stairs I, I i feel like i feel like they're arrogant in that way they made these stairs purposefully just to look that way knowing damn well how dangerous it was they just didn't give a fuck the dwarves did not care okay they, look look at this it's very blurry okay but these are staircases right very narrow staircases like this is ghetto like i don't understand why they did it like this <laughs> 
Anyway, they had a moment where, you know, all of them had to jump across because this area specifically, there was nothing there. So they had all jump across. Of course, you know, um, Buttermere helping Mary and Pippin and whatnot, and then Sam. And then it was Aragorn and Frodo that was right here. And then they had to jump across. Gandalf also got across too. He didn't use any magic. He just jumped. Um, the middle across and whatnot. A lot of, a lot of close calls and dangerous things. And we're coming across the event, the moment because he is the moment okay where Gandalf really shows us that he's not really just that dude he is that guy like we're gonna go to that moment okay 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 so actually no before then we gotta talk about the orcs the orcs basically come and whatnot into Moria and they fight them and whatnot like you know and there's another monster that they bring as well hold on Moria battle that lightsabers ugh, people are such geeks oh my gosh look at them look at the lineup right they ready they ready ready let's go like i can't but y'all they had to fight so many things and oh my gosh bro it was a bum rush they had to fight all of them it was more packed than a black friday walmart rush like I, if i'm gonna be honest with you I don't understand how any of them survived it. Like, bro, even the hobbits, bro, they had their swords ready and everything. Now, there's a moment where Frodo gets stabbed. We think he dies, right? He was already stabbed at the beginning, right? So, at the first part, he was stabbed. And then that's where we meet the elf woman that Aragorn's in love with, Arwen. And she helps him by, you know, carrying him on horseback, getting back to heal him and whatnot. So, he almost died during then, right? From a stab wound, right? I feel like it's his fate to die from being stabbed because there's so many times where he's stabbed, you know? Um, I say so many times, like it wasn't just two, but it's two in one movie. Like, child, anyways, this is when Frodo gets stabbed. You see this, you see it's dark, but you kind of see where he gets stabbed at. And he's a little person, so he got stabbed right in his stomach and pancreas. That shit hurt. Look, look. There's a gif of seeing how much pain he's in. You can see his life trying to leave his body right then and there, right? Or about to, right? Looks like it hurts like hell. Like, I can't. But y'all, anyways, after this, Mary and Pippin grab their swords, and they just start screaming, and they rush over to this monster. It's a monster. I don't want to say it's an orc. I don't know what it is. I think it's just the native of Moria. Like, it's been there. Like, after the dwarves have probably died out, it's probably been there, but it's huge and at least to the hobbits and the hobbits mary and pippin they're just like man all right let's go frodo about to die we gonna have to take this monster out and they jump on it they over here stabbing it as much as they can in his head i'm just like oh oh finally they have arrived like bro it was very nice to see and everybody goes over to frodo because they think oh my gosh he's dead whatnot but then as i said in part one bilbo had awarded Frodo with an elvish sword and a shirt. This shirt is special. It is very light, but on the outside, it has dragon scales. It is very, very resistant to many swords, like shields, whatnot. It's resistant to a lot of those things. So it's like, this is what ultimately saves Frodo from such a fatal attack. So it's just like, you know, yeah, I'm very glad Frodo put that on right then there at that moment. Because even though like this was, I think this was after they were about to go on their journey or whatnot. Actually, I think this was before they were about to go on their journey. And Frodo didn't even know he was about to go on this journey right then and there at that moment, you know. So it's kind of like, it's really good that he put it on anyway, despite the fact he didn't know he was going to go on the journey, which is very smart of him. Like, yes, good job. Like, great. Thank you for actually putting this on because you could have died, sir. You know, because there are some people out there that would have been like, oh, yeah, thank you. And just let put that in the inventory or some shit like that. They wouldn't have actually have put it on and whatnot. I'm speaking too fast. But yeah, anyways, this is the sword, by the way. I don't know if I showed y'all in better lighting now this is the famous moment guys this is the famous moment that i've been wanting to talk about how gandalf had upgraded from that dude to that guy like you know in fact from that guy to that angel like if we really should be just honest with it right so remember that narrow bridge i showed y'all earlier okay so they run through this narrow bridge right gandalf can feel that this monster they were already running away from this monster named the balrog the Balrog is a hell demon. It is like this big cloud of, of smoke and shadow that has wings. 
and its head is like on fire like you basically see it already you know it's, it's it's like an amalgamation of different fucking monsters and some shit like that like it's it's, it's really just your doom it's your doom so right Gandalf had decided to become a big 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 g okay he had stopped at the like um beginning of where they were running across that bridge he stopped right there faced the balrog and was just like you shall not pass and then he broke the bridge bro he broke the bridge now the balrog didn't know he broke the bridge balrog looked at him just like oh oh you thought and then tried to strike him but then he fell because the bridge had broken gandalf really was a g with that now i didn't tell y'all this dude has a whip now here, here 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 it is you think this is a sword this is not a sword this is a whip this is a whip a fire re-whip a whip on fire okay a whip on fire that's what the balrog had right so before you knew it the balrog as he was falling well this is a moment where he's whipping it around trying to intimidate gandalf <laughs> a bitch could never um there's so many showings of it i'm trying to show you when he fell and whipped him before he fell hold on so many pictures there it goes okay so this is a gift right the balrog is just that petty the balrog is a petty bitch it basically whipped its um whip and hit gandalf like here's the thing as it was falling, it's a heavy motherfucker too. It could have been like accelerating even more as it fell. Of course, you're gonna do that when you fall. But by how heavy it is, and when it whipped its whip, how did it know it was gonna hit Gandalf? Like it's, it's, it's kind of crazy that it, it, it just knew, right? So it still whipped its whip and Gandalf got hit by it and Gandalf about to fall. And then Gandalf says this line, that's just fly you fools. Now, you may think like, how is that? How could you be excited about a line like that? Bitch, he said in his dying moments, keep on going, yeah, 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 idiots, yeah, idiots, keep on going. Don't stop. It don't matter if I'm gone, bro. Keep on rolling with it, bro. Like, and he didn't know if he was gonna die or not. Now, in the next movie, he's even more of a G. It shows at the beginning, right? Oh, 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 when I do a review of that, when I do a review of that, it's going to be something different because that's when I'm really going to go insane. This is just the beginning. I'm literally going to go mental in the next part. In the next part, the next movie, I'm literally going to go insane. But y'all, anyways. Oh, yeah, this is low-key how it looks when he, before, right when he was breaking the bridge and whatnot. So, yeah, Gandalf falls. He dies. I think. We all think. Um... Frodo and the gang, they are depressed. They are torn. They are mourning him. And it's understandable, but Aragorn is the one that has to lead them into going further. He has to tell them we have to keep going, right? Bodomir is emotional. Everybody's emotional in here, so it's understandable. But Bodomir is just like, he, give him some time. Yeah, the dude just died. He didn't say all that, but he said, give him some time. And I was just like, no, don't make me cry. Like, ew, I don't feel like crying right now. Like, don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, they had to keep going. Now, after this, the gang is traveling, right? I think I may be missing a part or whatnot because my memory just, after this, I was just like, damn, I thought Gandalf was actually dead. So I was in mourning too. But child, anyways, um, they had heard about this witch of the woods, right? And she may seem very familiar to all of us. It is Galadriel. Yes, Galadriel, the narrator at the very beginning in part one, who I have told you about a little bit. She is so-called the witch of the woods. They go to her. I think as a form of resting and protection and to get more information about what their next destination is and whatnot. I think that was it. But there's an interesting talk between her and Frodo, and we're going to do that. Frodo was getting tired of bearing this ring. and It's understandable. He honestly, but the amount of times he's like tried to give the ring to somebody, it's, it's crazy. But child, anyways. It's understandable though he tried to give it to gandalf who definitely said hell no like <laughs> gandalf was just like um no that they whisper to me in my mind and ear hell no but yeah try to give it to galadriel and stuff like that um the ones he didn't give it to ironically were the race of men which is understandable boromir especially boromir 
Oh my gosh, Boromir, can, he has no resistance against this ring, okay? It's a good thing he never worn it here. Oh my gosh. But y'all, anyways, he, he like offers it to her. And then she has like this weird moment where it's kind of just like her face. Like, hold on, let me see if I can find it, how her face looks. Oh my gosh. There it goes, how she looks. Basically... It's like with the elves and dwarves, they have more of they have the most resistance against the ring than anybody else. Like you know, they can they it's not it's not gonna call to them immediately. Like you think, oh, the hobbits have the most resistance. No, just to Frodo, I guess the ring calls to the ones who like have like the most I guess goals or like the things they want to accomplish and whatnot. Since the hobbits live such a simple life and whatnot, they don't really want much or ask for much so that's probably why the ring this is my theory by the way that that's probably why the ring doesn't really call to them at the beginning right but with Galadriel she has this little moment where she's just like if I were to bear the ring I would do this and that with all good intention I would rise and like my lands and whatnot I, I don't know the words I actually stopped paying attention when she said that I was just like what the fuck is happening I was, I was doing something else. I was just like, what the fuck is happening? What, why, why, is she, why is she popping the fuck off right now? Like, what's going on? But y'all, anyways, after that, she denies it. Because he was really going to give her that ring. Like, Frodo is tired. Frodo is done, goddammit. He, he just wants to go back to Shire and just live his normal life like baby. But he can't. After this, she bids them a farewell as they continue on their journey with this moment where she just, just a good luck to Frodo. Oh yeah, before I move on to the next part, a key thing I forgot to mention with Galadriel is that she has, she's very powerful by the way. She has this thing where she can speak into people's minds, like she can talk to you, but at the same time she can talk to you in your head as she's talking physically to you. And it's very creepy. She was inside of, I think, Boromir's head too, saying like, you know, talking about his past and whatnot. She was inside Aragorn's head. She was inside Frodo's head. I was just like, damn, this bitch. Oh my gosh, she can really just have y'all disoriented and whatnot just confused and shit like who is this person like bro she an elf and whatnot they got powers but like <laughs> to this degree like no but y'all anyways that's on some sauron type shit like i don't know baby but y'all anyways now after visiting the witch of the wolves galadriel there's a moment where frodo in, in a very vulnerable state he's still mourning gandalf and he really does not want this ring right so he is very wary of everyone around him right when it comes to the ring especially the men I, I think just anybody in general but especially the the men of their group and whatnot so he is backing away from Aragorn and he's definitely like weirded out by Bordemir because he was on his own he was just trailing further I think they were took a nap and whatnot and then they were trying to find Frodo and Frodo was in the woods because he couldn't rest his mind he couldn't ease himself so he was just there in the woods collecting his thoughts and then Boromir was collecting um I guess firewood and whatnot and he was talking to Frodo trying to be good spirited and I was just like I like that because he normally is nice to the hobbits of the group and whatnot and to everybody else he's they're very cordial and whatnot Frodo on the other hand he was so wary and here I'm gonna tell you why Galadriel had hinted to Frodo like there's someone in your mindset that you know cannot be trusted around this ring she ain't saying it in these words but she she kind of like was hinting it in his head like hey yeah there's somebody you already know cannot be around this ring or you already hinted at in the past like already thought yeah they should never be it within even earshot of this ring okay and i'm guessing his and the thought in his head was boromir so he's very weird around Boromir. He's like backing away every time Boromir comes close. And then Boromir has this moment where he turns into Bilbo. When Bilbo saw that ring after not seeing the ring for a while, he goes into like a golem mode and whatnot, trying to grab the ring, grabbing all up on Frodo and stuff like that. Like, give me the ring. It's mine. It's mine. I want it. The precious. I'm just like, oh no, not again. Not again. I'm, oh my gosh. And then Frodo like gets away. I don't know if he like kicked Boromir or whatnot, but he runs as fast as he could away from there. And Boromir just like, oh my gosh, I'm sorry, Frodo, I'm sorry. And it's just like collecting his thoughts after the ring is farthest away from him. He finally collects his thoughts and it's just like, oh my gosh, Frodo, I'm so sorry. And then Frodo runs away. I think Aragorn, like he runs away to a part where Aragorn's at. 
And then Ergo goes, ugh, ugh, my voice. Aragorn goes near him and then Frodo's backing away. He's just, he already knows what he has to do. He has to do this journey alone. He talked a lot with Galadriel. I missed out a couple of those parts because I'm remembering them now as I had to pause and collect my own thoughts. But yeah, he basically knows he has to do this journey alone or he thinks he has to do this journey alone and whatnot. And Aragorn agrees, right? But before Aragorn sends him off or sees him off, the orcs come. And may I just say, Aragorn is that guy. Well, not that guy. He was that dude. He's not that guy just yet. Later movies, he may be that guy. But he's not that guy just yet. He's that dude, okay? He's on the same par as Legolas, may we just say. Look at this shots right here. Okay, so I don't know if y'all can see it or whatnot. I'm going to just zoom in. Look at how many fucking orcs are right here, okay? I know that I'm cursing a lot, and it's okay. It's okay. It's okay right now because the intensity that I want to put into how goaded this scene was. In fact, no, 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 no. The Gandalf scene against Balrog is goaded, but there's going to be a scene in uh, the next movie that is truly goaded. But this scene is also goaded, right? It really just shows you... Uh, Aragorn is really good as a swordsman and when I, as a fighter in general, and he's very confident. He knows what he can do. He knows what he can handle, right? Frodo is like trying to run away and get away from all these orcs and whatnot. And Aragorn just like, yeah, keep going. I got him. And it's just him against this like army of orcs, right? And he's about to whoop all of them, cut off all their limbs. Many an orc was slain. That's what he's going to do. It's just... I love it, bro. When I saw this, I was so hyped. I, I was so mad at myself because I didn't pop any popcorn for it. But baby, it's just him. It's just him, bro. In this cloak with his sword out, it's just him. And then, of course, the gang comes to help him. But baby, at first, it was just him. And he was slaying a lot of them. He ain't even get stabbed yet. He was really just putting them all down on his own. And I was so proud. I was so proud. I was just like, damn, Aragorn really is that dude, bro. I can see how he can become the king. I can see why he deserves to become the king. It's so crazy to me. Like, oh, my gosh. But anyway, Legolas comes in clutch, as he always does, with that bow and arrow. He comes in clutch, shooting the motherfuckers down. But there is a moment where he could have came in clutch just just in time if he had enough speed he could have came in clutch during this moment right so the orcs are coming the orcs are coming mary and pippin they sight frodo in this moment i'll keep this image on this in the background whatnot so keep in mind everybody was looking for frodo they were all sleeping like i said earlier and they were looking for frodo because frodo was not in his part of the place they were sleeping at he, he was in the woods collecting his thoughts before Boromir became Gollum and just tried to take the ring from him. But they found Frodo and was just like, Frodo, Frodo, over here. Come here, come here. There's danger, come here. And from the look Frodo gave, he slightly shook his head and looked at them. And then Mary was just like, he's not coming. He's not coming with us. He's going on his own. He told Pippin this. And then the orcs were coming, right? The British are coming. No, I'm just kidding. The orcs are coming, right? And then Mary and Pippin made this this just good ass decision, even though it's not that good, but it's good to just be like, hey, over here. They threw something. They would just say, hey, over here, bozos and whatnot. They didn't say that, but I, that's what it kind of giving the energy off in that scene. And then they were attracting the orcs to over there, getting them away from Frodo, which is very smart. And Frodo got away, but Mary and Pippin were in danger and whatnot. So Boromir, we forgot Boromir was there. Boromir came out the woodworks, baby, to protect these hobbits. And that's what I really love, bro. That is what I really love. They go hard for these hobbits. They were so nice to them. Like, I can't. I, I really love that of course maybe it's because they're kids but they have grown man faces so it's like are they kids are they they can live to 100 years old over that so are they kids i don't know but y'all anyways let me show you boromir oh my gosh i <laughs> broccoli boromir i can't spell his damn name hold on uh protects uh <laughs> mary and pippin pip pip anyways Let's see. Where's the scene? Where's the scene? Look. Okay, so he is running over to them, right? He sees they're in danger. He goes over to them. He is fighting them orcs on his own, right? And trying to protect Mary and Pippin. Mary and Pippin are watching in shock because he came there fast, right? He was protecting them. There is one orc that is a mixture of goblin and orc. Now, let me just tell you. 
Saruman is evil Knievel, right? He is very twisted and corrupted. I will show you the gif of like how the orcs are just coming out this weird goo like substance because they were just born they come out these like sacks and whatnot like how some animals when they're just born they come out like a fluid or sack or whatnot he is breeding these orcs to be a mixture of one race and another race so it's basically like twisted elf mixed with goblin and he's making these creatures himself and it's so gross may i just say that's how boromir dies though he dies from one of those twisted amalgamations it had a bow and arrow right Okay, so the moment when Legolas could have had a showdown, right? I was over here just like, Legolas, where are you? Come and clutch, please. I'm calling him like he a Pokemon and shit. Baby, Legolas ain't came, bro. I was so mad. Hold on, hold on. I was so mad. Oh, uh, oh, baby, I was appalled. I was really appalled. I was pissed off. I was just, look at this. Okay, so, no. Can I show y'all the scene? No, I'm getting copyrighted. Ah! Uh! YouTube, why? Okay, so he gets shot with this arrow, right? And he keeps on fighting. I'm gonna have to look it up. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm gonna just see if. Damn it. Ah. Ah. Why am I not working? Look, look, look at how he coming in. He running to save him. Hey, he finna slay him all. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to find where it is. I'm gonna just hold on. This is how it looks. It looks painful. He gets shot in the shoulder with an arrow, right? And he keeps on fighting, like, he keeps on fighting, bro. Now, he gets shots with one arrow, right? That looks painful as shit, right? He keeps on fighting. He slays them orcs. All them orcs coming up him, they're jumping him, and they still are managing to die. How are you managing to die, and you're literally jumping this one person? Like, bro, you're useless. But y'all, anyways, uh, he gets shot with another arrow. Now, first he gets shot in the shoulder. Second, he gets shot in, was it the abdomen or the stomach? Uh, I don't know the order. I think it was the abdomen, then the stomach. But he gets shot, right? And each time, he looks like he's in just intense pain. Intense pain. Understandable. Because it's just like, bro. And after the second one, he keeps fighting. A little bit slower. But, of course, he got shot by two arrows. Of course, he's going to be fighting slow. But it's the fact that he kept fighting bro like no 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 no. and then the third one the third one my guy that was the time he got shot with the second arrow then the third one my guy third one came fell to his knees then that's when mary and pippin had the bright idea to actually try to do something right because it's not like they can they can't like hold their swords or whatnot they've done it they've jumped on that big ass monster thing in moria and protected frodo after frodo had been supposedly almost dying stabbed and whatnot but they had brought the bright idea to attack and the orcs quickly picked them up like they was like mama's at a store after a baby was throwing a tantrum and throwing all the stuff off the aisle they picked them up like that i was just like damn bro they snatched off real good and then they kidnapped them but y'all anyways Boromir dying bro he was dying this is the look of his face lord bro look of shock look he he fell to his knee after that oh baby he went out like a g like a g and then before that orc that was shooting him before it had ended his life Aragorn came out the woodworks Aragorn was just like no 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 he fought that motherfucker and he killed it but anyways, it was very sad. They had a good talk and whatnot. And then Boromir was just like, you know what? I accept you as my king, as the true, uh, he said, as the true heir. And then he said, as my king, I was about to cry. I was just like, oh, oh, oh my gosh. Why? 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 I was like, this <laughs> just annoying, annoying myself, actually. I was like that. But then, you know, gets them on the forehead as a farewell to a very good friend, a warrior. He kept fighting for those two hobbits, got shot three times, and was still fighting. I was like, bro, this dude's on a different level. This dude's on a different level. And that's why I was mad at Legolas. I was just like, baby, you could have came in clutch. Where were you? Where were you? Where were you at? I know you came to the rescue for Aragorn and you were fighting off all those orcs because of the Royal Army at Orcs. But, like, 
Come on now, like, you know, you could have left. Aragorn kind of had it, if I'm gonna be honest with you, at the beginning, and then he needed some help and some assistance, but then you could have just left and gone to help Merry and Pippin. You know, like, with Barrymore, like, baby, you know, you let Barrymore get shot. I keep saying Barrymore, oh my gosh, Bordermere get shot three times, three times in the body. And then you want to come and help, bitch. I was so done. I was just like, he got shot by a bow and arrow. You, this was your match. You could have had him, bro. You, you you kind of met your match there, but you were too late to go and save him. No, I, I was so mad. Bitch, huh? anyways, Aragorn came in clutch. He was just like, baby, I'm right here. And then he defeated that bow and arrow slinging motherfucker. And then, yes. And then Bordemir died. Bordemir is dead. He's not coming back. And he's a man he's not an elf he's not a dwarf i don't know if elves and dwarves can survive such things I, elves yeah i think dwarves can as well but men no they can't they already have short lives they can't survive anything like that so it's like yeah he died he died a g he died a, a huge g he is the goat as we love to call it that way look at this that was the one who killed Bodomir. Look at this ugly ass. Look, that was the one. Look at the hair, though. Look at the hair. Oh, that was who killed Boromir. Bor the way Boromir was shot with an arrow, it looked so real. And I like how they did that. That shit looked like it really did hurt. Like, that shit looked like it really did hurt. Like, I can't describe it any better than that. Like, like, like bro, I was, as he jumped, I jumped. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, oh baby, please don't fall. And then he did it, and then he kept fighting. And then he got shot again. I was just like, oh my gosh, please fall, please fall. And then he did it. He kept fighting. And then he got shot a third time. I was just like, damn, he's dead. He was. I, I can't. I literally can't. But, yeah. <laughs> I literally cannot. Chai, anyways. After this, right? After this, they're taken. Mary and Pippin are taken. Frodo and Sam are about to go Frodo and Sam, hold on. Frodo uh Frodo uh about to leave. Should I type no oh my gosh, hold on. Now Frodo is going on this canoe to cross the water because he has to go on his own to throw the ring into Mount Doom. Go to Mordor, right? Sam this whole time, you're thinking like where was Sam this whole time, right? Sam was trying to find Frodo. Sam was trying to find Frodo, right? He caught up to Frodo somehow. I don't know how Sam evaded all those orcs. He probably was already ahead of Miriam and Pippin. Makes sense, I guess. But, like, yeah. He was trying to find Frodo. He found Frodo. And then Frodo's just like, no, Samwise Gamgee. You can't go with me or whatnot. And then he's, like, already in the middle of the lake, basically. And then Sam can't swim, right? And I shouldn't have laughed. I shouldn't have laughed, but I did, right? When he went into the water, he almost immediately drowned. I was just like, oh my God. <laughs> I was just like, no, why did you do that? And I thought, oh, he did that on purpose. He did that on purpose. So Frodo would have to stop and save him. Oh, yes. I don't, I don't know why I was like that. <laughs> Bro. But yeah, I was just like, oh, he did that on purpose. Look, he's in the water, right? He, he's basically about to drown. Frodo had to go and save this dude, bro. I, I literally can't. And then look at the face. Oh, he's a crying. Oh. And then he was just like, I made a promise that I would never leave you. Sam said that. He was just like, I'd never leave you. I never intend to. I never will. And then Frodo was just like, oh, I said, why is Gamgee? He didn't say his full name. I just love saying his full name. And then they hugged it out. And then they're going on this journey together. They cross up the, the lake and whatnot. And they are going to journey off to Mordor. Now, that's not the end just yet. Now these three, Aragorn, Legolas, and Gimli, they go to the edge of the lake. They already see that Frodo and Sam have made it across the lake and whatnot. And Gimli and Legolas didn't know that Frodo was leaving on his own, Frodo and Sam. They didn't know, but um, Aragorn had let them know. And they're kind of just like, oh, what do we do now? Kind of like that. They're filling in a little bit of low spirits. But Aragorn brings their heads up and just like, you know what? We still got two more hobbits to save. Let's go ahead and save them, right? They were mourning. That's why their heads were down. They were a little bit depressed. They were just like, you know, we lost. We got skin up and we lost Bordemir. It kind of sucks, right? But then Aragorn lifted their heads and whatnot. And he motivated them enough to where it's just like, yeah, yeah. Let's go and get the two hobbits. Let's go get married. And Pippin, yeah, and then they headed off to journey to go get the two mischievous hobbits. 
And that is the end of the Fellowship of the Ring. Yeah, I know, right? You might think like, oh yeah, you know, the ending should have had more meat to it, right? Well, it's a trilogy. There's going to be way more meat in the next two movies. And it's basically made to be like, oh yeah, you know, uh, there's clearly going to be a sequel to it. It's made out to be like, oh yeah, this is just to be continued. They may as well have just slapped us to be continued at the end. I don't know if they did or not. I don't think they did. I'm glad they didn't. Um, but they may as well have. I mean, shit, you already know it's going to be a continuation. But yes, that was the end of it. It was such a good movie, bro. The fact that I remember at least most of it lets you know it was a good movie. Because with some good movies, like, in fact, no, it was an amazing movie. I'm not even going to say it's just good. It was an amazing movie, right? Some movies that are just really good to me that open my mind to things or just make me feel good. Big Hero 6 made me feel good and emotional. And I really could make a whole video on it. <laughs> This one right here, this lovely ass movie. Okay, so fun fact, I had chose to watch this movie on my 12th birthday, 2014, December 13th, right? I didn't know how good this movie was gonna be. I just thought it was gonna be good because it's a Disney movie, it should be good, right? This movie was so, so, so fucking good. Oh my gosh, bro. Oh, oh my gosh, bro. Like, I'm literally the goaded of choosing. Not, like, I'm the goaded pick of choosing. Like, I can't. No, I'm just kidding. But I'm actually not. <laughs> I'm not kidding. But, like, still. It, I, baby, it was really good. I really remember everything to this day still. I actually do. I'll say it in a choppy-ass way, but I remember everything. And that's what great movies does to me. Great movies like this one and The Fellowship of the Ring. They helped me remember everything because they were just so good. They opened my creative mind, you know, that would help my creative mind and whatnot. They, it's like I'm seeing something new. Like, you know, it feels like I'm seeing something new and it's very exciting. And that's why. That's why I remembered everything. And I'm glad I did. But, yeah. You know, for the end of, like, a lot of my videos, I'm, I want to start, like, putting up an image of Hinata Hiyuga. Because uh, my PFP is already Hinata Hyuga being a boss bitch, as of course she is a very much a queen and whatnot, you know. And that's a fan art of it. I don't know who the fan artist is. I'm gonna find them though, uh, the one of, on my PFP or whatnot. But yes, I should start doing that. But yeah, this is the end of the video. I am very glad I got to review the Fellowship of the Ring. It, this is not even a review. It's basically a retelling, right? May I just say, my favorite moments, of course, is Gandalf battling the Balrog, you know, Aragorn battling all of those orcs and whatnot, like, baby, baby, a whole army? Oh, oh, that was, that was, oh, oh, he really showed big energy that day, like, I can. That was my favorite moment. What was my other favorite moment? When Bilbo Baggins' birthday. <laughs> Bilbo Baggins' birthday was really good. Because it's Gandalf's little smile. Hold on, let me show you. These images are so blurry. Maybe it's because it's an old movie. But look how excited he is. He bought that whole cart of fireworks for Bilbo Baggins' birthday. And may I just tell you, this man is so precious. Like, I love it. I love it. I love Gandalf. I love Ian McKellen. This was such a good role for him to play. Like, I literally can't. Um, but yes, that's the end of the video. And may I just tell you to all of my people on the A-list, every A-list or every shipper out there, you know, all, every shipping hog. I want peace to be with you for an eternity. Good day. Huh?